हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर विवेक अग्रवाला कंसल्टेंट मेडिकल इनकोलॉजिस्ट फ्रॉम नारायणा सुपर स्पेशलिटी हॉस्पिटल हावड़ा एंड आर एन टेगौर हॉस्पिटल कोलकाता टुडे आई विल बी टॉकिंग टू यू अबाउट द ट्रीटमेंट लैंडस्केप ऑफ प्रोस्टेट कैंसर्स एंड मेनली कंसनट्रेटिंग ऑन द ट्रीटमेंट पैराडाइम सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ प्रोस्टेट कैंसर स्पेशली मेटास्टेटिक प्रोस्टेट कैंसर देन वी हैव टू डिवाइड द मैनेजमेंट इन टू पार्ट्स one is management of metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer and one is the management of castrate resistant or hormone resistant prostate cancer now if you look at the treatment paradigm in the last decade it has gone a huge change as compared to the earlier decade so if you look at the management of upfront metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer a decade ago the management consisted of androgen deprivation therapy alone whether you do it through agents uh, by drugs or whether you do it by bilateral orchidectomy but androgen deprivation therapy alone was the standard of care 10 years ago but in the last 10 years now we have multiple agents which can be added to androgen deprivation therapy to improve uh, the overall survival so in the current era if we want to look at the management of hormone sensitive prostate cancer we have to look at whether these patients are high risk or low risk now this risk stratification is just not based only on the disease volume or the number of sites where the metastasis is but also on other factors which includes disease factors like visceral metastasis whether present or not and especially liver metastasis then what is the uh, psa presentation and what has been the response to uh, adt in the psa as well as certain other factors like gleason score which can also give you some clue but uh, other uh, patient related factors also like what is the age comorbidity tolerance to uh, the expected treatment and what is the cost of the treatment and affordability of the patient now when you take into consideration all these factors in the high risk prostate cancer in patients who are Uh, eligible for chemotherapy we should go for uh, a triplet therapy with adt with docetaxel with abiratron as per the latest uh, peace trial or we should go for uh, docetaxel plus darolutamide plus uh, adt as per the arsens data if the patients are not eligible for chemotherapy but are high risk or they are not preferring to go for chemotherapy because they are high age and they have reservations about it then you should plan the treatment with adt and abiratron again if the patients are low risk and with a very low psa and low disease volume then the patients should be treated with uh, adt with uh, novel androgen receptor inhibitors like uh, enzalutamide or darolutamide or apalutamide now coming to the castrate resistant prostate cancer here also in the last decade the the management has gone a very big change a decade ago the treatment of metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer included only docetaxel chemotherapy and there were no good agents to treat after that certain patients who had a non metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer here also the approach was to continue adt and to withdraw adt but there was no good study which could really select out the patients to improve their long term outcomes but in the last decade there has been multiple studies which have uh, shown a paradigm change in the management of metastatic prostate cancer in the castrate resistant setting if we talk about the non metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer there are now a uh, three agents which have proven uh, a great improvement in metastasis free survival as a surrogate endpoint as well as overall survival enzalutamide apalutamide and darolutamide all these three drugs can be added to adt in patients of non metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer to improve their overall survival as well as metastasis free survival especially if we select the patients who have a faster time to psa progression which is less than 10 months if we go to the metastatic setting here also there has been multiple of agents which are added to adt beyond docetaxel 
So we have the novel hormonal agents like abiratron, enzalutamide, darolutamide, apalutamide, as well as other chemotherapeutic options like cabazitaxel. Certain oral taxanes are coming up. Platinums are coming up, especially in the uh, setting of aggressive neuroendocrine disease. And PARP inhibitors have come into the management with olaparib and rucaparib. Immunotherapy with pembrolizumab has come into the setting as well as uh, the radiopharmaceutical drugs have come into this picture with uh, radon as well as lutetium. So here also the sequencing of treatment in metastatic cancer resistant prostate cancer is of very significant value and how to sequence the treatment is now much debated. If we talk about the number of factors which should decide our treatment here also disease related factors like the disease volume whether visceral metastasis and liver metastasis is present or not, what is the PSA, uh, what is the uh, response to ADT and what is the duration of uh, progression post ADT are important factors which help us decide as well as the patient related factors just as I stated like the affordability, the age, comorbidity, expected tolerance to the treatment, patient preferences which also have to be taken into account. One of the uh, few clues that give us uh, what should be the ideal uh, sequence of treatment tells us that if your patient has been actually exposed to docetaxel in the hormone sensitive setting then repeating docetaxel has not shown good results and instead you should select cabazitaxel as your chemotherapy options. This is again more valid if your patients are having visceral metastasis, liver metastasis and a shorter time to progression post ADT that is less than one year. In these settings you would want to go to cabazitaxel. Otherwise you want to start one of the hormonal agents either abiratron or the newer androgen receptors then follow it up with cabazitaxel and followed by another hormonal agent and then uh, going to the radiopharmaceutical drugs like the radon and the lutetium. In the recent advances there are two most important things that have come up is immunotherapy in the setting of uh, MSI high and TMB more than 10. So in these two cases immunotherapy with pembrolizumab have shown really good results and another setting is the presence of BRCA mutation or the HRR mutations. So if BRCA germline mutation is present or somatic uh, HRR mutations are present including BRCA1, 2, ATM1, PALB and so on and so forth. Now there is good data to show that PARP inhibitors can add significantly to the management in third line or beyond when they are added to ADT. So the Olaparib data showed a very significant improvement in progression free survival in the cohort a which included uh, BRCA1, BRCA2 and ATM1 mutations and moderate improvement in progression free survival in the cohort B which included all the HRR mutations. So genetic testing in prostate cancer is something that has come up in, in the recent times and all patients of high risk prostate cancer and metastatic prostate cancer we should do uh, a germline uh, mutation testing as well as uh, somatic HRR testing to know what is the mutation status and see if the patients are eligible for PARP inhibitors and there are 10% of patients who would almost be having germline mutations as well as around 25% patients who would be having somatic HRR mutations who could benefit from this new treatment. So with this I thank you all for patient listening. Mm -hmm.